Florida, Georgia, one of the best rivalries in college football, of course, and one we all look forward to as a neutral site matchup each and every year in the SEC Eastern Division. But has it lost some luster? We will discuss with David Waters from Gators Breakdown. And of course, head on over there, whether it be here on YouTube or your favorite audio platform, that's Gators Breakdown. David, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Mark. How about you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So Dan Mullen took over, and he's upgraded the program step-by-step, year-by-year. This would be the first time, correct me if I'm wrong, that this game did not mean the SEC Eastern Division lead control of the division. Yeah, and you bringing that up, I believe it's the first time it's not a top-10 matchup since Dan Mullen's been head coach of Florida Fire, if I'm thinking correctly here. Uh, and this is also the first time uh, – in program history, Florida's facing the number one team twice in the season, Alabama earlier this season and Georgia coming up this Saturday. So playing two number one, eight, that's, in, that's as far as AP right now. Uh, so that's the, that's the stipulation there. But still, you know, hold some weight there going against Alabama earlier in the season, Georgia now. Uh, SEC East, mathematically you're still in it, of course, but we know yeah, this, this is not for the SEC East like it has been marked uh, the last few years. Like you said, uh, Florida – a little bit of, you know, probably should be in a little bit of desperation mode, should be playing for pride here, not necessarily playing for much more than that. So still a rivalry game. You're still playing the number one team in the country. No matter if it was Georgia or not, you know, you get up for playing the number one team in the country. It just happens to be your biggest rival uh, at, at the same time this year. So, you know, playing for pride, playing a little bit of spoiler here for Florida. It's kind of the storyline of this game uh, for, for, for the Gators. So we'll have to, you know, rally the troops, play the best team in the country, best defense in the country. And uh, of course, Mark, <laughs> I was talking on Twitter, social media this morning, of course, talking about the Florida quarterback situation, but Georgia's kind of got one of their own. You, you could see four quarterbacks uh, <laughs> in this game between the two teams here. If I remember right, we might've seen at least three quarterbacks last year, maybe four. I don't, I don't remember exactly. Uh, that's, that's Bennett. That was pretty much his game start yeah. to finish. Yeah, Trask, yeah, Emory, I believe, did get some play last year, and then Stetson Bennett, and then DeJuan well, I don't know. Mathis. With DeJuan Mathis may have come in. and He did, he did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you did see four last year as well. Florida, Georgia, David and saying, Waters, and, Gators breakdown. Yeah, four, four quarterbacks taking meaningful snaps here. Yes, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, it's uh, Florida at four and three, could come out of this at four and four. Wow. Yeah. Georgia, of course, seven and zero. Oh. You mentioned Georgia is the number one team in the country, and I don't, man, I don't remember a time that we hit the halfway point in the season, and there was a team that there was really no debate. They're the best team mm -hmm. in the country, and nobody's really debating it. Not that people aren't saying, okay, Alabama on the right game will obviously get its shot in college football playoff. Couple teams out there, maybe, but man, um, this defense. I think we really got certainly on from from opening night against Clemson and the Clemson offense has been nothing close to what it's been in the past, of course, but still you hold a team to three points. And then the Arkansas game that was really the one that woke me up to man, this defense just doesn't even let offenses get the play started like they wreck half the plays before they get started. Uh, you know, how do you look at that matchup in regards to Florida's offensive line? handling that front four and front seven and if there are any matchup opportunities advantages that you see for the gators yeah mark that is uh what this this game will be about um i, I do think dan muller can probably scheme up something i don't know if his offensive line will give him a chance to uh, i think that's where i'm probably leaning with this just because of how dominant that georgia front that defensive line is those linebackers, you know, that front, however, however they want to line up their multiple, they'll go front six, they'll go front seven. You know, they'll, they'll mix it up a bit. They don't have to blitz a whole lot just because of how dominant they are up front. Uh, and I'm interested because I, I do believe Anthony Richardson will get some play in time. Um, maybe even start maybe a whole, a whole lot more playing time this week, more so than he has so far this season and teams have, come at him with some with some pressure uh, so, so far in the last couple of weeks. I, I asked Dan Mullen about that, uh, Anthony Richardson, and what de how defenses are playing him because uh, he, he tests the ball down the field. He, he opens up this Florida offense, and it's not even comparable as far as when you start looking at the numbers of how, like, how more explosive this offense is. 
with Anthony Richardson compared to Emory Jones. But in order for it to be explosive, he's going to have to have time to throw. And that's going to come down to to this Gator offensive line trying trying to block this, this Georgia defensive front. And that, that is the biggest matchup question here. Florida can – hold serve up front and it's not going to be consistent but can you hit the explosive play i think that's where i, I, I however how, how many explosives can florida hit you're not gonna florida's got a ton of 10 11 12 play drives this year you're not doing that you're not driving 10 11 plays 75 yards against this georgia defense it's not not going to happen you're going to have to hit your explosive plays that lends itself to anthony richardson playing more hitting jacob copeland down the field hitting these receivers down the field, but it, it starts up front. If you can't have the time to throw, if you can't have the time for the explosive to develop, I'm not so sure if Florida's going to be able to hit them. So that is the biggest matchup question right here, Marcus. No matter who's quarterback, those front five for Florida's got to block that front for Georgia. And, David, when we flip it from offense to defense, we're looking at a Georgia team that has Do we its... have to? Do we have to, Mark? <laughs> we, we're going to. We're going to hold you to it. <laughs> You, you got to. We bring you on here for the tough questions, David, because I can't answer them. So you got a four-headed monster at running back for Georgia, as they typically do. I think they've uh, narrowed it down a little bit more, but basically four guys have gotten the carries this year, and we know they're all four and five stars. We know the names, and we got uh, the offensive line. We're talking experienced offensive line, super talented NFL players. We know the deal. Last time Florida was on the field was against LSU, an LSU rushing attack that basically hasn't done much against anybody. Yep. And then Ty Davis-Price goes wild, sets yep. records. Wow, the, the formula just looks awful. And that's why you it don't does. want to talk about it. It, it, it does, Mark. And you know, maybe, you're, maybe you're hoping for something like what happened with Florida LSU, maybe something that you don't expect to play out. It, maybe it plays out that way. You know, football has been weird in 2021, but that's what we're talking about. It, we're talking about something that has to happen that you don't expect to happen. And you, it, did we really expect Florida to be in that situation coming in this Georgia game? You know, you're, you're looking for something that's kind of just going to be off record, off key uh, for a reason Florida can win this game. And look, Georgia's had a lot of success, you know, minus last year, but there was a lot of early success before Stetson Bennett got hurt. A lot of success versus Todd Grantham's defense. Uh, since Dan Mullins come and Todd Grantham was defensive coordinator. If I'm remembering right, Mark, I'm trying to think. 18, it was a 10 nothing lead for Georgia. 19, I think it was a 10 nothing lead for Georgia. They got a 14 nothing last year. You're not getting down to this Georgia defense and coming back. So it's imperative that, you know, Florida's defense shows up, shows up early in the game, more so than they have in recent years. And you look at what you – mentioned and the last time Florida's defense was on the field versus LSU, a team that didn't run the ball all that well coming into the Florida game. Surely, surely didn't run it well versus Ole Miss last week in the game after Florida. Yeah, they had nowhere near that production outside of the Florida game. So it doesn't, you know, it's not trending well for Florida. You know, Florida had done okay in, in stopping the run up to that point versus LSU. It held Alabama less than 100 yards. Um, Kentucky's run game – had some success, but not their normal success that they ha have had th throughout the season when they played Florida there. So you've been able to point to a little bit of metrics for this Florida defense. Say, yeah, they've improved, but, Mark, for me, it was always, 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 always. I don't care what you do versus FAU, USF, Vanderbilt. The season was always going to be, Mark, what do you do versus Alabama? What do you do versus LSU? What do you do versus Georgia? 0-2 oh, so far uh, and, and, and a defense – very slow start versus Alabama earlier this year. Complete bottom fallout versus LSU. And now what do you do versus Georgia? Uh, a very consistent offense, an offense that's very balanced, a very offense that an offense that can take their shots because of how that run game gets going. And if you know Todd Grantham doesn't have an early game plan, Florida's gonna Florida's gonna fall behind early on again, and you're not coming back on that Georgia defense.